in it. If you're able to stand this morning, I would ask that you will please stand. For the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silent. Amen. Amen. I will mourn him. Oh, how I love Jesus. I'll follow by our prayer by Brother Clarence Goodman. Core response. Welcome Holy Spirit and a selection from the, from the Central Mail Chorus.
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, Central. Praise the Lord. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, I will be thy name, thy kingdom come, that will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Father, we thank you for this day. We come to you this morning, Father, as empty pitchers before a full fountain, asking for a visitation of your love from on high. Father, we, we, we remember your resurrection, and we have come to lift our voices with praise for you, our Lord. We thank you, Lord, with our voices. And on this day, Lord, and every day, we lift our eyes to see your miraculous glory. We open our hearts to receive your love. We engage our minds to understand your truth, and we offer songs only to praise your name. Lord, as we have dedicated our lives to do your service, please use us in a way that we may reveal your blessing to a dying world. Father, help us to understand the things that we cannot understand, the things that are happening in France and all over the world. In the name of love, innocent people are dying, and they are dying in a war that they have not participated in. Father, we ask you, Father, to bless the disenfranchised, the sick, the poor, everywhere. Lord, forgive us of our sins and heal us when we sick, when we are sick. And give us the strength to get up again and again whenever we fall. We pray for healing. We pray for protection. We pray for our children, for the oppressed, and people throughout the world. In your name we pray. Amen. Welcome, Holy Spirit. Out of 
to you. Me up. Me up. Mm. Use me, Lord. Use me, Lord. I'm yours, I'm yours, I'm yours, I'm yours. My life is not my own. Choose me. Thank you, Lord. To glorify your glory. I belong to you. I'm yours. Yes, I am. Send me, Lord. I'll go. The harvest is ready. You can use me, use me up. My life is not my own. To you I belong. I give myself, I give myself to you. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Use me. It is now time that we would hear from our welcome and recognition of visitors you, by Deaconess Julia Livingston. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We say good morning to our Central Baptist Church family and to all of those that are viewing via the internet. We would like to welcome you to a wonderful and awesome worship experience this morning. At, at this time, we're going to ask all of our visitors if you would please stand and remain standing. If there are no visitors in the house, we just welcome our family back to worship again this morning. We want to take this time just to highlight some of our upcoming events. Our new members class will be held on today immediately after the 8 a.m. worship service and it will be in room 101. Pastor Ezel will preach at the Oakey Spring Baptist Church, Springfield, South Carolina on today at 3 p.m. The male chorus and united voices will accompany the pastor. Our annual Thanksgiving service will be held on Wednesday, November 25th at 6 p.m. and the United Voices will render music. The church office will be closed on Thursday and Friday, November 26th and November 27th for the Thanksgiving holiday. <coughs> Christmas at Central sponsors are needed to adopt families. All ministries and members are asked to participate. Sponsorship forms are available at the front and the rear entrances. Please submit your completed copy to our church office. Report cards for the first marking period are now due. Please place report cards in the, acad in the academic recognition mailbox located in room 104 by Tuesday, November 24th. All ministries and auxiliaries are reminded to submit your 2016 budget request forms by Monday, November 30th to the Director of Operations. Budget forms are located in the mail room. All of our couples are invited to a couple's movie night out with dinner. 
It'll be here on December 5th from 4 until 7 in our Family Life Center. Each couple is asked to bring their favorite dish to share. We ask if you would please view our website for additional announcements by logging on to www.centralbaptistcolumbia.org. Today's scripture comes from the book of Psalms 116, verses 12 through 19. Thank you so much for your attention. We'd like to thank Brother Clarence Goodwin for the strength and the power of his prayer and for Deaconess Julia Livingston for those announcements. It's offering time in the house of the Lord. Amen? Amen. Oh, let's put our hands together. It's offering time in the house of the Lord. Amen? Amen. It's that time that we give back to God what he's a portion of what he's already blessed us with. Amen? Could we all stand as we ask God's blessing? The Bible says God loves a cheerful giver. Also tell us in Malachi that we should bring our tithe, his tithes and our offering to the storehouse that there may meet for thy people. And he said, prove me now here what said the Lord of hosts, that I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you should have room enough to receive. Let us bow our heads. Father God, in the blessed name of Jesus, Lord, it's once again that we come saying thank you. Father, we thank you that early this morning you touched it with the finger of love and we arose to see a new day. Father, we thank you now for allowing us the privilege to bring back to you your tithes and our offering. Father, we ask now that as we bring these tithes and offering, Father, that you will let us bring them with a cheerful heart. Let us bring with a smile on our face because, Father, you've been so good to us. You continue to bless us even when we don't deserve it. Father, you continue to let your light shine upon us. So, Father, we ask now as we bring back to you your tithes and our offering, mm -hmm. Father, that it may be used for the uplifting and the building of thy kingdom. And, Father, we ask that you bless all that we have to give and all that we have left. In the blessed name of Jesus, we pray, and all of God's children say, Amen. Amen. Senator, center pews face each other, outside pews face the walls, and you're now in the hands of the ushers.
Amen, amen. Let the church say amen. amen. If you love the Lord, say amen again. Amen. Bow your head with me for a word of prayer. Bow your head with me. Repeat after me. Say, God, God. I'm, sorry. I'm sorry for the praise, for the praise that, I that I have given you thus far. I have acted like, have acted like you haven't done anything for me. And you have not been good to me. I'm sorry. Forgive us as a church family. Now let us praise him. Come on now. Come on, give God praise in this building. Come on, put your hands together. Open up your mouth and give God praise in this building. Has the Lord been good to anybody? Has the Lord blessed anybody? Has the Lord made a way for anybody? Has the Lord opened a door for anybody? Oh, come on and give God praise in this building because the Lord is worthy to be praised. Hug the person next to you. Give somebody a holy hug next to you. Tell them good morning to you. Tell them good morning. Amen. Amen. Tell them good morning. Amen, amen. Tell God I'm sorry. Amen, amen. For there is a sweet spirit is in this place. And we know it is the spirit of the Lord. Amen. We thank God for our presiding officer on this morning and the personality of Reverend Kenneth Wilson. For Reverend uh, Winslow Harrison, Reverend Clance Atterbury, we praise God for each and every one of you, my brothers and sisters, on this Christian journey. God is a good God. He can do any and everything but fail. Amen. We we'll remind you now, I know at the Central Missionary Baptist Church that we have some of the best cooks in the world Amen. that you can find anywhere. Amen. And come this Wednesday, most of the great chefs and cooks, they started cooking early. And they can't pry themselves away from the kitchen. But we're asking you on Wednesday, put it on slow cook. <laughs> At around 6 o'clock Wednesday, and I promise you we'll have you out of here by 7 o'clock. We started a couple of years ago an annual Thanksgiving service where we come together and we give thanks to God for the blessings that he's given upon us and for the holiday that we're about to have on that Thursday. Some say, well, Pastor, can I thank him in the kitchen? Yeah, you can. But the Bible said, forsake not the assembly. As others do, let us gather together and collectively give thanks. Amen. Our uh, United Voice will render music. We would have you out of here by 7 o'clock. We have great turnout for the last couple of years, and we're looking forward to a great time. I promise you, your potato pie will be ready. When you get back, you'll still have it done in time. Amen. Pastor, I got to cut up greens. You got Monday and Tuesday to cut them up. Cut up Monday and Tuesday. Amen, somebody. Just come on out and say, God, I'm just coming to give you thanks for the holiday that we're about to celebrate. Amen. So we're looking forward to a wonderful Thanksgiving service. God is still in the blessing business. Amen. And then we, we have a slight problem today, and I hope that we're able to solve it before we leave. We have four families yet to be adopted for Christmas. We need four sponsors. If you have not adopted a family, we need your help on today. Amen, somebody. Let me tell you something about when you adopt a family. It just does something for you when you're able to bless someone else. Amen. If you can't do it by yourself, get with another partner. You know how it is when you hear something on sale, you call somebody, y'all meet at the mall, and y'all, you do what you do. Amen. And the best after the service. Uh, they would have sponsorship forms for you so we can get these four families adopted. There are four families. I think we have 40-something families. We have four that have yet to have sponsors to them. Now, don't adopt if you feel there's a burden to do so. Adopt if your heart is there and you want to help somebody. Amen. I told my wife when we were coming back, when they called me when I was in Charleston, to tell me we needed four more sponsors. I said, don't know about a sponsor for, we'll pick up four more. We adopted 80 seniors, four more ain't going to hurt us. 
I just love blessing people because I know what it does for me and I know what my relationship with this Lord is like in the blessing business. Amen. So ask yourself the question, can you and will you this year adopt a family? We only have four left. I want to take care of this even before we get to 11 o'clock. We should not have a church with a membership of 13, 1400 having an announced between two services to get four people, four family. Amen. 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 Come on to the back after service and adopt so we can have those four families. You say, well, Reverend, what does it take to adopt? Really, it's not so much the amount that you spend for them for the holiday season because see, each person has a blessing according to the way the Lord has blessed you. But just be willing to say, in the corner when I look around, do I have a little something extra that I can share with somebody else? Amen. We have been doing this for the last eight or nine years. It costs almost $30,000 a year to adopt the 50 families we do for Christmas. We've always been able to do it through donation. Always been able to do it through donation. I know we're going to be able to do the same this year. Amen. So let's get the full form, form so we can get that taken care of today. Now, today we're leaving ahead to the Oak Spring Baptist Church at about 145. It's about our drive. Um, I'm preaching there at 230. Oak Spring is a former church of my wife's father, the Reverend J.A. Gasson. He pastored there for over 20 something years. And we're going there today to preach Dr. Perkins, the pastor, their eighth anniversary today. So United Voices and the Mayor Corps will leave here about 145. On our way, we're headed down 26. We're going through Swansea. We're going to catch number three like you're going to Blackville. Then we're going to turn off number three right in Oak Spring. Amen. So we're looking forward. I, I made that road a lot of times when I was dating his daughter. <laughs> I sort of remember the directions, y'all. Amen, somebody. So that's what we're headed at on today. Now, we ask that this time, every year, during our Stewardship Emphasis Month, we share the blessings of why I tithe. We do it to encourage others about the blessing of giving back to the Lord and being good stewards to the Lord. We've had our staff on all um, this month sharing the blessing. My wife, Cookie, serves as director of our uh, enrichment program during the summer, our summer enrichment camp, and also of our website. So she's going to come forward now and share the blessings of why I tithe. Amen. Good morning, Central. First, giving honor to God, who is first and foremost ahead of my life, to our illustrious pastor, the Reverend Ricky Ray Ezell Sr., to our associate ministers, to our Central Baptist Church family and friends. I stand before you this morning to share the blessing of why I tithe. When I was asked to share why I tithe this morning, I pondered over what I was going to say, and it kept coming back to me in the form of a question. Why wouldn't I tithe? Central God has been good to me throughout the years. So I made a choice to honor him by being obedient to his word. Malachi 3 and 10 reads, and I like the way the Living Bible paraphrases it. It says, bring all the tithe into the storehouse so that there, may w so that there will be food enough in my temple. If you do, I will open up the windows of heaven for you and pour out a blessing so great you won't have room enough to take it in. Try me. Let me prove it to you. I don't know about you, but I want my blessings to overflow. Amen. I tithe also to prove my faithfulness and my faith in God. I have witnessed the healing powers of God throughout my family, throughout my friends, throughout my church family, and with myself personally. When situations arise because I talk to God in the calm, I'm obedient to his word, then I don't mind calling on him in the times of my storm. I'll call him and say, Lord, I take you at your word. You promised me. I'm obedient to your word. So I don't mind calling him in the storm. Finally, I tithe because I love the Lord and he commands us to give. Not just our money, but our time, our talent as well. John 14 and 15 says, if you love me, keep my commandment. I truly love the Lord. 
Therefore, I want to do what he commands us to do. I love him because he continues to hear my cry, and he continues to work situations out in my life. I want to continue to be blessed, not so much for myself, but so I can continue to be a blessing to others. I'm at a point in my life where I don't need or want anything else materialistic. Now, honey, that's not referring to you because every lady likes a little something, something every now and then. But I receive my joy by blessing others, and I feel blessed because God has put us in a position to be able to bless others. This is one of the reasons why I got so excited when my husband and I personally decided to bless our seniors by giving each one of them a Thanksgiving basket. This is why I get so excited about Christmas at Central. And I don't just give it holidays, but I give all year long. Every opportunity I have to give is another opportunity for God to bless me. Some of you may have heard the song by Lee Williams and the Williams brothers when it said, ooh wee, another blessing. And that's just how I feel sometimes. God keeps blessing me. I just say, ooh wee, it's just another blessing. And it's not always in materialistic things, but sometimes you need to ask God just to give you a peace of mind, to give you reasonable health and strength, just another chance to get out the bed and put one foot before the other. It's just another blessing. When you are obedient to God, you can claim victory over your life. Remember, Central God only asks for 10% of your time, your talent, and your money. It all belongs to him, so you have nothing to lose, but you have everything to gain. It's just like a farmer. How can you expect a harvest if you never plant a seed? Thank you. All right, Miss First Lady, I thought I was off the hook for there for a moment. <laughs> When she says she didn't need anything else materialistic, I said, let the church say amen. But she came back and clarified that amen, somebody. Thank you so much for sharing the blessings on why I tithe. Amen. At this time, we would have our scripture reading. My sister Mary Briggs followed our selection by our mayor chorus. Then I will return with the preach word. Let us stand together in preparation for the reading of our scripture. Good morning, Central. Good morning. morning. Giving on in the spirit of God, I honor Reverend Ezel, pulpit associates, members, and friends. I will be reading Psalms 116 through verses 12 through 19. What shall I render unto the Lord for all his benefits towards me? I will take the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows unto the Lord, now in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of saints. O Lord, truly I am thy salvation. I am thy salvation, and the son of thine handmaid, thou hast loosed my bonds. I will offer to thee the sacrifice of thanksgiving, and will call upon the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows unto the Lord, now in the presence of all his people, in the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of thee, O Jerusalem, praise thee, the Lord. I have read Psalm 16 through verses 12 through 9. May the Lord add a blessing to the hearing and the doers. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Lord, do it, do it for me 
Woman touched the hem of his garment. Oh, when she stepped back, she was. You can do, you can do everything that you want. Come on, Lord, do it, do it for me. The woman touched the hem of his garment. Oh, when she stepped back, she was here. You can do. How many of y'all know he'll do it for you? There were three boys in the fiery furnace. Oh, when the king he saw four. You can do, you can do everything that you want. There were three boys in the fiery furnace, but oh, when the is off, you can do, you can do it. Lord, do it, come on. Lord, do it, do it for me. Everybody say. Do it for me. Do it for me, Lord. He did it for Daniel in the lion's den. He'll do it for you. Do it for me, Lord. Do it, me, do it for me, Jesus. Do it for me, He will heal your body. Do it for me, and He will make you a whole He will wash you whiter. Whiter than snow. Do it for me, if you need an answer. Call on the Lord If you need saving Call on the Lord If you need salvation Call on the Lord He did it for me He did it for me Call on Jesus. I call on Jesus. Yes, 
called on Jesus He came running He said in his word I've heard the cries of my people yeah I'll come down and deliver thee yeah. He'll do it for me yeah. Can I get a witness can I get a witness? Can I get a witness? Can I get a witness? He'll do it for you this morning. He'll do it for you right now. He's a God that you can't hear. But I know he's on time. Yes, he will. I say yes, he will. I say yes, he will. I know he will. Say true, he'll do it for you. Yeah, yeah. He'll do it for you. If you need a blessing. A blessing, blessing right now. He'll do it for you. Everybody say yeah. Oh yes, he will. Do it for me, Lord. Do it for me, Lord. Lord, I ask you to heal my mother. Come on and do it for me, Lord. Do it for me. Do it for me. Come on, let's everybody say it. Do it for me, Lord. Do it. Come on and do it. Do it for me. We all praise his name. How many know you gotta praise it for your blessing? How many know you gotta thank him for what he's already done? He'll do it for you. Somebody's been praying. Lord, do it for me. Do it for me. Lord, do it, do it for me. Everybody say, Come on, you can do, you can do it. That thing that you want. Oh, Lord, do it, do it for me. Oh, thank you, Jesus. He'll do it, when he do it, won't he do it? Can I get a witness that he'll do it? Oh, 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 thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Oh, bless you, God.
Jesus. Lord, thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. You did it for me, Jesus. You did it for me, Jesus. I need I need the old oh, Every, every, hour. every hour, yeah, 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 I need thee. Oh, 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 bless. Come on here, oh, bless, oh, bless. Oh, bless. Oh, bless, oh, bless. Oh, bless. Oh, bless. Yeah, yeah. Come on, come on. Oh, bless. Oh, bless. Oh Lord, I come. Oh Lord, I come. I know He'll come. Oh Lord, I come. Say it, say it. With everything I got, I come. No matter where I am, I come. No matter what may come, I come. Oh, I come. I come to thee. Oh, yeah, yeah. Say, yeah. Say, yeah. Say, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Lord, I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. Oh, you better say it here. Say it after it. I love you, Lord. Say everybody here that loves the Lord. Put your hand up. Oh, my Lord, 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 Lord, you've been so good. Anybody know you've been good? You've been so good. I said so good. You've been so good. So good. You've been so good. You've been so good. You've been so good. I'm a witness. I'm a witness. Yes, I'm a witness. I'm a witness. I hear you, Sam.
Let me thank Sister Mary Briggs for leading us in the reading of our scripture, Psalms 116, 12 through 19. For sermonizing purposes, I want to focus on verse number 12. For sermonizing purposes, what shall I render unto the Lord for all of his benefits towards me? That's the King James Version. The NIV translated this way. How can I repay the Lord for all of his goodness to me? Eugene Peterson in the Message Bible put it this way. What can I give back to God for the blessings he's poured out on me? I just want to tag this harmonic thought today. What, can I render, what shall I render unto the Lord? My brothers and my sisters, as we continue the month of November, as Stewardship Emphasis Month. Many times you don't get a bunch of amen in stewardship because stewardship is equated with money. Stewardship is not just about money. Stewardship is about our time, our talent, our tithe, and our temple. It all belongs to the Lord. And many times people get real quiet during Stewardship Emphasis Month because a lot of folks don't want to hear sermons on stewardship. But I don't know how to pick out what to preach and what not to preach from the Bible. The Bible is not like a buffet line that you get to decide what you want to hear and what you don't want to hear. Our responsibility is to preach the whole counsel of God. So that's why we embark upon Stewardship Emphasis Month. Let me ask you this question. Have you ever had this question? Ask yourself, where did all the money go this month? Have you ever found yourself saying those words? Have you ever looked at your checkbook and your stub look better than your check? Oh, I wish I had a little help in here this morning. Have you ever asked the question, why do they have so many other folks on your check? Cutting FICA, in-law Social Security, Uncle State, Miss Federal, taking out all this stuff out of your check and sometimes the stub looks better than the check. Have you had ever been to the point where you had more month left than you had money? It is very easy for expenditures to fall outside the boundaries of our earning and how easily inflation attacks our savings. The minute you pay off one thing and think you have it all together and saving something else comes along. And what you thought you were getting ahead over here you find yourself still struggling over here. But I learned that as tithers and committed givers of God, that we don't respond to situations like others who have no hope. The question of giving is best asked and answered and understood as express, expression of thanksgiving and praise for the goodness of the Lord. So the reason we give as believers is to say thank you to the Lord for the goodness that God has demonstrated to us. To get the most personal fulfillment from giving, to know the full joy of giving, to be able to give as generous as we should, then giving has to be seen as an expression of thanksgiving and praise for the goodness of the Lord. If you see giving to God as another debt, as another bill, as another responsibility, you'll never enjoy the fullness of giving. We should never complain about the 10% we're asked to give to the Lord, but we should be thankful for the 90% we get to keep. Can I say that again? We should never complain about the 10% we're asked to give to the Lord, but we should look at the 90% that we ought to be thankful for the 90% we keep and praise God for it. Job serves as reminders to us all that the Lord gives and the Lord taketh away. 
but still blessed be the name of the Lord. My brothers and sisters, our text remind us of what shall we render to the Lord for all the Lord has done for us. I love the Lord because he heard my voice and my supplication. That's 116 in 1. I love the Lord. Remember that this uh, psalm is a love psalm. Have you ever told the Lord that you love him? Can I ask you a question? How long have you just been dating the Lord? How long have you just been going out with him? But you truly, do you truly love the Lord? Because he heard your cry. I feel that the most important thing in the Christian life at this point is our personal relationship with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Do you love the Lord Jesus? Do you love his person? Do you have a personal relationship with him? Is there any communication with him? Have you talked with him already today? He's vital and real to you. The scripture says we love him. In 1 John 4, 19. Because he first loved us. Whom having not seen ye love. In whom though now ye see him not. Yet believe in ye rejoice with joy. We have what we call unspeakable joy. And full of glory. 1 Peter 5 and 8. The Lord said to Simon Peter. Simon lovest thou me uh, unto him that love us and wash us from our blood and sins in Revelation 1 and 5. We love him. To the church in Philadelphia the Lord said I will make them to come and worship before thy feet and know that I have loved thee. Philadelphia represents the Bible believing church today. Now what is the basis of all this love? I love the Lord because he heard my voice. I love him because he first loved me. I like to talk to the Lord myself a long time as, I, as I'm driving in the car, as I'm sitting along, because I realize that just a little talk with Jesus will make everything all right. Uh, we need to talk to the Lord in the calm so it doesn't make it difficult for us to talk to him in the storm. Uh, the sorrows of death may encompass us, the pain may be upon us, but we may be in trouble sometime, but it doesn't take away our love for the Lord. Uh, our text talks about a situation that we knew that no matter what we're going through, we could sing even in the midnight that we still love the Lord. We could sing in spite of hardships, in spite of things that we're going through, just because what I'm going through is not good to me, it doesn't mean the Lord is not working it out for my good. Uh, he did not have to die for me, but he did. He laid down his life for you and me. He didn't have to do it, but he did. No one took his life from him. Then the text said, they called upon the name of the Lord. Oh Lord, I beseech thee, deliver my soul. In 1, 16 and 14. He cried out to the Lord, save me. His prayer was heard, gracious is the Lord and righteous, yea, our God is a merciful God. I don't know about you, but I thank God for his grace. And I thank God for his mercy. Then he said, return unto me in 6 and 7, thy rest. O oh, my soul, for the Lord has dealt bountifully with me. In other words, the Lord has, has blessed me. But I don't measure and compare my blessing to somebody else, but the Lord has blessed me. The Lord has dealt bountifully with me. Too many times we get mixed up what someone else may have. It really doesn't matter to me what someone else may have, but the Lord has blessed me. That, that the Lord has truly been good to me. That I don't measure my blessing by somebody else's blessing, but I can truly say that the Lord has blessed me bountifully. That I have a witness in here. That doesn't mean I haven't struggled some time, but the Lord's been good to me. That doesn't mean I don't have my share of ups and downs, but the Lord has been good to me. Doesn't mean that I haven't shed tears late at night, but the Lord has been good to me. And doesn't mean that my money hadn't been funny, my change hadn't been strange, and every now and then my credit might not get it, but the Lord's been good to me. I, I wish I had a few witnesses in here that the Lord's been good to me. My back has well been, been up against the wall, but the Lord's been good to me. I've been behind sometime, but the Lord's been good to me. Sometime I count on my bank.
bank statement didn't look good, but God still been good to me. I wish I had a few witnesses that in this house early this morning who testimony is that the Lord been good to me. Now, have anybody here that without a shadow of a doubt that the Lord's been good to you? I wish I had a few praises in here that early this morning that the Lord's been good to me. Oh, somebody just praise him right now because if he don't do anything next time, he's already been better than me. If he don't bless me anymore, he's already been good to me. Uh, do I have a witness in here? Sometimes when you walk, you may have a little pain in your leg, but just shake it off anyhow because the Lord's been good good to me. Sometimes when it gets cloudy like this, Mr. Arthur start acting up on you, but the Lord's been good to you. I wish I had somebody here. Just got to anyhow praise now. Anyhow you fix it, Lord. It's, it's all right with me. Anyhow you bless me, Lord. It's all right with me. And anyhow you make a way, Lord. It's all right with me. And anyhow you open the door, Lord. It's all right with me. The Lord's been good to me. Can I ask you a question? Has it been good to you? Has the Lord been good to you? You don't say it like you mean it. Has the Lord been good to you? I don't mean what's in your pocketbook, but has the Lord been good to you? I don't mean where you work, but has the Lord been good to you? I don't mean where you live, but has the Lord been good to you? I don't mean who you work, but has the Lord been good to you? Go ahead and give him praise where you are. Now after a difficult and frustrating pressure field day we need to seek out a quiet place where we can confess our sin read the word and talk with God that is a sanctuary of the soul oh how all of us need this returning to thy rest oh my soul this will enable us to walk out and face the world for God first of all it said that how can I repay the Lord for all his goodness to me the psalmist give us three insights very quickly there. He said, first of all, I'm going to take up the cup of salvation. That's what he said in 1, 16 and 13. I will take up the cup of salvation. Once delivered and saved, my brothers and sisters, we have a duty for the Lord. God does not save us just for our own benefit, but he saves us primarily for his benefit. The saved are to serve. Let me say that again. The saved are to serve. Let me say that again. We should never have to make announcement and appeals to get folks to serve if you are saved. <laughs> Y'all with me? The saved are to serve. When the Lord saves us, there's an obligation in order to serve. Taking the cup of salvation and all involves drinking all which includes serving the Lord. The cup of salvation includes living for the Lord. A saved person should behave differently. A saved person doesn't have any business flying off the handle at any and everything that you don't like. A saved person is controlled by the leading of the Holy Spirit. A saved person needs to decide whether you're going to be a thermostat or a thermometer. Did y'all get that? Huh? Did you get that? See, with this thermostat on the wall, I can go manually and adjust the temperature. All a thermometer does is read the temperature. Are you a thermostat or are you a thermometer? A saved person doesn't let the smallest thing get on that nerve all the time. Want to quit all the time. Want to give up all the time. When you're saved, it ought to be something different on the inside that'll show up on the outside. Uh, when you are delivered, you're free. You're, we ought to act that way. One of the big problems of Christians is the poor behavior of the redeemed. Folks on the outside, look at how we act in the church. And they say the church is no better than the world. Uh, they act like the world, they said. They, they look like the world and they talk like the world. Uh, when we in church, we act like we churchy. But when the benediction is given, we act like the world. But Romans 12, 1 and 2, so I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God that you present your body as a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reason of service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind 
that you may prove what is good and acceptable and the perfect will of God. Apparently this was the Passover cup, the cup of salvation, being passed at this time. As they passed it around the group, they would sing, I would take the cup of salvation. They knew the Passover cup was pointing to the one who was coming. Our Lord sang this in the upper room. I have wondered if this was a cup about which he said, you shall take this cup and drink it. I will not take it until I drink it new in the kingdom because I have a cup to drink from tomorrow. Then out in Gethsemane, he prayed that the cup would pass him by. His holy nature rebelled against being made sin. Yet for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. He took that cup joyfully the next day. Matthew 26 and 39 said, And he went a little further, and he fell on his face. And he prayed, saying, O my Father, if it be thy will, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not my will, Lord, but let thy will be done. I don't know about you, but every believer's testimony ought to be. Lord, not my will, but Lord, let your will be done in my life. Every now and then you will have to drink from the cup. I don't know about you, but every now and then in this life, you're going to have to drink from the cup of bitterness, the cup of disappointment, the cup of frustration. You're going to have to drink from the cup, but not my will, Lord, but let your will be done in my life. There will be time that you'll be lied on, lied to, and lied about, but you will have to drink from the cup. There will be time that people will talk about you, run your name down all all over town but you gonna have to drink from the cup I don't know about you but I'll drink from the cup of salvation cause I know if I drink from the cup of salvation then everything is gonna be alright I believe I got some witnesses here today that you can say that we are more than conquerors through him that love us somebody testimony is today look where the Lord has brought me from the Lord has brought me out of darkness he's brought me into the marvelous light. Look where the Lord has brought me from. Uh, there are some haters out there who said you wouldn't be here today. There are some haters out there who said you wouldn't make it. There are some haters out there who said you wouldn't amount to anything. But you tell them that the devil is a liar. That God is on my side. If the Lord bring you to it, the Lord can show not bring you through it. To so have a witness out here today. I know it's early on Sunday morning, but is it too early to tell God thank you? Is it too early to tell God I love you? Is it too early to tell the Lord you've been mighty good to me? I wish I had an early morning praiser in here. I wish I had somebody here who would give God some early glory. I wish I had somebody here who would give him some early praise. I wish I I had somebody in this house who grateful for what the Lord has already done. If you're grateful, throw your hand up. If you're grateful, throw your hand back. If you're grateful, just give him the glory and just give him the praise that if it had not been for the Lord on my side, somebody tell me, anybody tell me, somebody tell me, anybody tell me, where would I be? First of all, what shall I render to the Lord for how good the law has been? First of all, I'm going to take up the cup of salvation. The second thing it says in the text, it says in 13, I'm going to call upon the name of the Lord. Oh, it's good. Call upon friends. It's good. Call upon family. It's good to call upon the pastor. But we better make sure you can call upon the Lord. Hmm? Call upon the name of the Lord. This past Friday I was in Charleston. You may call me and I may be out of town. Can I tell you somebody who works uh, 24 hours a day? Can I tell you about somebody who neither slumbers nor sleep? <laughs> and when you call him, he'll put you on three-way. One for the father. One for the son. And one for the Holy Ghost. <laughs> He'll put you on three-way. <laughs> but he's never busy. 
Let me tell you how good he is. He can answer everybody calling here at the same time. Huh? Let me tell you how good he is. He knows the number of halves on your head. And when you don't have much like me, he still knows the little part that it comes up every now and then. He knows the number of halves on your head. Uh, you can call upon the name of the Lord. See, God's blessing will make a better praying person out of the one who has been blessed. When God blesses you and you pray, it makes a better person out of the one who's been blessed. Psalm 41, 3, 1 through 3 says, so you can call on his name. I waited patiently for the Lord. He inclined unto me, and he heard my cry. He brought me up also out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay, set my feet upon a rock, and established where I had to bury my goings. He's put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God. Many shall see it in fear, and shall trust in the Lord. Romans 10 and 13 says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, shall be saved. Somebody asks you, what organization are you a member of? Tell them I'm a part of the whosoever group. <laughs> For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Oh, it's good to call upon his name. I don't know about you, but I'm glad to be part of the whosoever group. Because I'm part of the whosoever group, I could call his name Jehovah Jireh. For the Lord is my provider. Part of the whosoever group, I call them Jehovah Rapha. For the Lord is my healer. I call his name Jehovah Nisi. For the Lord is my banner. Call his name Jehovah Shalom. For the Lord is my peace. Now I call his name Jehovah Rohi. For the Lord is my shepherd. I don't know how you feel, but it's good news. To be able to call on the name of the Lord. Can I tell you something before I put my head on the pillow last night? I fell down on my knees and I called on his name. Early this morning when I rose and saw another day, it didn't matter whether it was cloudy or rainy, I began to call on his name. I said, thank you for this is the day that the Lord had made. I will rejoice and be glad in him. It doesn't matter whether it's rainy, sunshine, but this is the day that the Lord has made. I will be glad in it. I just learned to thank God for each day. It doesn't matter what the weather or the temperature might be. I've learned to thank God for each day. And yes, because this is the day. I've learned to praise God for the day. Not for the weather, not for the condition, but I've learned to praise God for the day. So I praise him early this morning. On my way to church, I was calling on the name of the Lord in my car. When I pulled up to the parking lot, I was still calling on the name of the Lord. When I walked down the hall, I began to call on the name of the Lord. When I went in my office, I called on the name of the Lord. When I made my way to the restroom, I called on the name of the Lord. When I kneeled down and prayed, I called on the name of the Lord. While I was sitting in my seat, I called on the name of the Lord. Is there anybody here that every now and then you just can't help yourself but you got to call on the name of the Lord. How can I repay the Lord? What shall I render unto the Lord? First of all, I'm going to take the cup of salvation and then secondly, I'm going to call on the name of the Lord. Then third and finally, as I see my exit ahead of me, it said then I'm going to pay my vow to the Lord. I will pay my vow unto the Lord. During a time of stress, we have to make vows to the Lord. That if God does something like deliver us, we're going to be more dedicated to him. Many times I hear people make pledges on their hospital bed. Lord, if you just heal my body. When I come out of here, I'm going to praise you like I never praised you before last for two weeks sometime Lord if you deliver me out of this I'm going to be in your house every Sunday morning and give you praise like I'm about to lose my mind don't forget the vow and the promise that we make to God this statement means that the psalmist will keep his vow 
Good resolutions cannot be carried out speedily. Vows need to be fulfilled quickly or we will become delinquent and may never fulfill the vow. I try to keep my promises. That's why you got to be careful that you don't overextend yourself and try to be everything to everybody. Sometimes you're going to have to say no to some things that you know you cannot do. But many of us have such big hearts. We want to do everything for everybody. I want you to know God is a promise keeper. And I try to keep my vow to him. This has been experienced all too many people. In the presence of his people, the psalmist goes out publicly with his dedication. He is not ashamed of his dedication or profession of faith. If you cannot show your faith in the company of his people, you will never show your faith before the world. In other words, the psalmist thought about how good the Lord had been. And even if he put death in perspective, he says, precious in the sight of the Lord. And 116.15 is the death of a saint. One of the things that the psalmist would do because of God's blessing is demonstrate a good perspective even when it comes to death. The unbeliever feels death, would not talk much about it, but the believer has a different perspective on death and needs to show that perspective as a witness of his faith. Psalmist in 116 and 16 says, O oh Lord, Truly I am thy servant, thou hast loosened my bonds. The summons was in bond, a slave to evil, when God delivered him. Out of gratitude and responsibility, Reverend Harris and the summons would now serve the Lord. This interest in the serving the Lord betrays one's lack of faith. Reverend Wilson 17 through 19 is how offer the deed of sacrifice of thanksgiving. Now that the summons has taken up the cup of salvation. Now that the psalmist has offered sacrifice and praise unto the Lord and called upon the name of the Lord. Now the psalmist declared that I will make a vow unto the Lord. In other words, I have a thankful praise I must give God. Well, it said, in the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of thee, O Jerusalem, praise ye the Lord. I like this, a final remnant unto the Lord. It's for all his benefits toward me. They gave a thanksgiving pray. As I'm closing, Cartrell put up 116, 17 through 19. We're talking about what they were able to do. When the question is, what shall I render unto the Lord? First of all, I'm offering the Lord a sacrifice of thanksgiving. 17, I'm going to continue to call on the name of the Lord. 18 went on to say, I will pay my vows unto the Lord. And guess when I pay my vow? I'm going to do it in the presence of all his people. I have a witness in here. I'm not trying to do it secretly. I'm not trying to do it behind anybody's back. But the Lord has been so good to me that I'm going to pay my vow in the presence of the Lord. And 19 says, in the courts of the Lord's house. In other words, I'm going into the temple. Well, make it relevant, Reverend, I'm going into the Lord's house. I'm going into the church in the midst of all of the people. I'm going to show my vow and pay my vow by praising my God in the midst of all the people. Oh, I wish I had a witness in here. In the midst of the people, I'm still going to give praise unto the Lord. What shall I render unto the Lord. Well, how can I tell God thank you for what the Lord has already done for me? To have a witness in here, how can I render my benefits to the Lord for the blessing that the Lord has shown upon me? How can I tell the Lord thank you for all the Lord has done for me? First of all, do I have a witness in this house? I'm to take up the cup of salvation. Well, I'm going to call on the name of the Lord and I'm going to pay my vow unto the Lord and I'm going to do it in the midst of all the people as I gather together in the Lord's house. I don't know how you feel this morning, but I'm getting ready to give him thanks and the presence of all the people. Yes, this is the Worship emphasis month. Uh, yes, I'm gonna tell God thank you 
I'm going to thank God first of all for God's time. Uh, the time that I have does not belong to me, uh, but the time that I have belongs to the Lord. That yields a time and that yields a season under the sun for everything. Uh, there's a time to live, uh, there's a time to die, uh, there's a time to cry, there's a time to mourn, there's a time to plant, and there's a time time to show up. I'm going to tell God thank you for the time that he's blessed me with. Is there anybody here that can thank God for the time that the Lord has blessed you with? I'm going to thank God for the talent that the Lord has blessed me with. The talent that I have, it does not belong to me, but the talent that I have, it belongs to the Lord. I'm going to use my talent for God to get the praise and for God to get the glory. Let your light show shine before me so that others may see your good work and give your God the glory which he is in heaven. I'm going to use my temper in order to give God the glory. This temple that I have does not belong to me but I've been bought with a price and that Jesus has changed my whole life. Do I have a witness in here? I'll be careful how you use your temper because it's God's temper. You ought not to put anything in the temper because the temper does not belong to you, but the temper belongs to the Lord. I'm going to use God's tithes in order to give God the glory. That paycheck I earn does not belong to me, but it belongs to the Lord. That job that I have does not belong to me, but it belongs to the Lord. That house I live in does not belong to me, but it belongs to the Lord. That car I drive does not belong to me, but it belongs to the Lord. So every now and then you just got to give God a thank praise. What shall I render to the Lord? All I can do is to tell the Lord thank you. Why you every time you sing, that's a thank you praise. Anthony, every time you play, that's a thank you praise. Little Sam, every time you beat, that's a thank you praise. Big Sam, every time you hit the string, that's a thank you praise. Ushers, every time you usher, that's a thank you praise. To have a witness in here. Deacons, every time you pray, that's a thank you praise. Every time you go to the hospital, that's a thank you praise. Every time you throw your hand up, that's a thank you praise. Is there anybody here that can give God thanks for all the Lord has done for you? Is there anybody here? So what shall, what shall, what shall, what shall, what shall, what shall I remember to the Lord for all his benefit. If you can't do anything, you ought to wave your hand for what the Lord has already done. You ought to wave your hand that I could have been dead, but the Lord made no death behave. Is there anybody here that'll give God a thank you praise? Somebody tell him thank you for another day. Tell him thank you for another day. Tell him thank you for wiping tears from my eyes. Tell him thank you for healing my body. Tell him thank you for picking me up, for turning me around, for placing my feet on solid ground. Is there anybody here at the Central Baptist Church that got a thank you praise? Look to your neighbor and tell him thank you. Look to the other on the left and tell him thank you. Look to the one on the right and tell him thank you. Look to the one in the back and tell him thank you. Ask him what you're thanking God for. I'm thanking him for you that you're here today. I'm thanking him for your life. I'm telling God thank you. Open up your mouth and tell God thank you. Say yeah. Say yeah. Say yeah. What shall, what shall I render to the Lord? Other words, what shall I give back to God for all his goodness, for what the Lord has done for me? I can't pay him because he owns everything. 
Earth is the law. Fullness thereof. World and day that dwell therein. The cattle upon the hill is here. Silver and the gold is here. He owns everything. So I can't pay him. But I can take up his cup of salvation. I can show this dark world that Jesus is my light. By the way I carry myself. The way I act demonstrates my relationship with the Lord. That demonstrates that. My relationship with the Lord. I tell you a little while back, a few years back, I had somebody that come by the house and do work and they didn't do a good job. And I paid them the full amount. My wife said, why did you do that? I, I can't act like other folks act. There has to be a difference in me with my relationship with the Lord. I, I, I listened to him. I didn't get it brought clams in writing. He charged me more than them. But that was on me. I can't act up because they act up. If both of us act up, who's different? You remember they said that there were two men walking down the hall and both of them were arguing, acting crazy. They didn't know which one had it in sense and which one of them crazy. They were acting the same way. Our light has to shine bright enough that there's a difference in our life. There's not a member in this church that can do anything to me that I won't love you, won't speak to you. Sometimes I know you might be upset with the decision I make. I find you when you be trying to go out the other devil. I catch up with you. Huh? Because my love is beyond that. It's greater than that. Small stuff I don't sweat. You're never going to make dollars concentrating on dimes. You got to see the bigger picture. What God has for your life. Take the cup of salvation and say, I'm saved. I get wounded, I get hurt, I get disappointed, but I know I'm saved. You can't make me doubt my salvation. And so I got to act in a manner that's pleasing in my God. Tell me, well, you so saved, why you said what you said to me you, you got mad at me I'm saved but I'm still struggling I'm trying to get better and you have a way of just taking me where I don't want to go where I'm trying to leave from but you won't let me alone you want me to go back to being a negro I'm trying to grow I'm trying to grow up Take the cup of salvation and then call on the name of the Lord. Don't let a thing get you so down that you can't call on God. Say, Lord, I need you. Lord, I done messed up again. That's over again. It's me, Lord. It's me. I, I'm your child, Lord. I, 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 I've done something that's not pleasing to you, God. But I'm calling on your name because there's no other name on the heaven nor earth that I can call on except the name of the Lord. And then God, I promise I'm going to make my vow to you. I promise to praise you and give you thanksgiving. And I'm going to do it in the court. I'm going to do it in front of all your people so they would know that the only way I came out of this it was because of the Lord. I couldn't do it myself. I couldn't do it myself. Has anybody ever been in anything that it was nobody but the Lord that brought you out of it? Huh? Anybody ever been through some stuff that you don't want anybody to know about it, but you know God got you out of that situation. Like, can I be real? Anybody right now need God to get you out of something? Anybody here need? Everybody stand at the same time so, so they won't know it's you. Everybody stand at the same time. And just praise them together at the same time. Anybody, <laughs> so they won't know it's you. Just praise them together at the same time. Anybody ever been through something that the Lord brought you out? Anybody need something right now? Show up and show up right now and work it out and work it out 
right now. Give him praise right now. Give him glory right now. Give him honor right now. Let us remain standing. Let us remain standing. Remain standing. There may be someone today up under the sound of my voice desires membership in our church family want to step out from where you are today give the pastor your hand but give God your heart you may come by letter by your Christian experience a candidate for baptism as we throw as we prepare to open the doors of the church we know God is able we know God can do anything but fail. The Lord has not brought us this far in order to leave. As a choir leads us in our invitation to him, if you desire full membership in this church, raise your hand at this time. We will walk with you a step out and come down the aisle. Will you surrender to him now? All to Jesus, I surrender. Amen, amen. Let's celebrate as Gwen makes her way down to the altar. Yes, 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 yes. Will you come today? Yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Will you come today? Mm. Yes, yes. Will you come? Door of the church is open. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Go ahead and just come stand. Just come stand it out. Stand it out. I got it. Come stand right at all. Yes. Yes. Will you come today? If you desire membership with our church family, will you come? Yes. You got to surrender. Yes. Worldly pleasure. Worldly pleasure. Yes. Oh, take me. Take me. Y'all hear the words of that song? Take me oh, I surrender. It's prayer time at the altar. Will you let's make your way to the altar for prayer? Sing that again. Sing that verse again. Sing the chorus all to Jesus.